Sasha, this is a very different role for you. Was that the appeal? Yeah, I mean, it was different, uh, but also similar to, you know, part of my life, which is when I do Ali G or Bruno or these last characters for Who is America, I live these kind of two separate lives. You know, I'm me, a kind of, you know, me. And then I try and get fully in character in these in these, uh, you know, different persona. And sometimes, for example, in the last show, I was living in Washington, D.C. for three weeks, and I had to leave, live completely undercover because I, I was almost busted by Bernie Sanders was the first day. So I literally, you know, had to enter every building through a fire escape um, and make sure there was no record that I was in D.C. for a few weeks. So it appealed to me, that idea of, like, living these two lives. Your character with art uh, revealing too much um, almost loses himself um, at some point. Have you ever been so deep into a role that it's had a residual effect when you've come home? I remember there's a dear friend of mine, Gary Shandling from the Larry Sanders show. I used to play basketball with his every Sunday. And I remember a month after I finished a movie called Bruno where I was playing this gay Austrian fashionista. And I was playing, and obviously, you know, I'd been in character for a few months, and he suddenly stopped the game, and he went, Sasha's still Bruno! Because I was still had Bruno's physicality when I was going up to the basket. So, yeah, there sometimes still is that residual. That would have been something to see, I think. Yeah, 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 yeah. The other thing about this character is he's very, very gregarious. And at the beginning of the show, he isn't. I was wondering when you are in public, is that a persona that you have also cultivated just for your fans or to hide maybe some part of yourself that's vulnerable? Oh my God, this is like therapy now, yeah? <laughs> uh, every performer is, uh, you know, deeply abnormal. So there must be a reason why, you know, we want to be in front of camera or I want to do, you know, make out with the guy in front of 2,000 rednecks who want to, you know, put me in hospital. So, yeah, there's definitely some... Uh, we're a bunch of weirdos who people out there pay money to see. So, yes, we're deeply troubled. And I advise you all to switch off whenever you see me or any of my colleagues on camera. Very quickly, a lot of your humour is political. Where does that strain come from? Was it cultivated as a kid? Um, how, how come you're so involved in showcasing things that need to be discussed? At university, I was a history major, and I was actually started doing my PhD, actually on, it was on sort of Jewish involvement in the black civil rights movements across the world, including in South Africa. So it was going, I was going to look at the fact that Jews had been disproportionately involved in the black civil rights movement in America and also in the ANC and also obviously like Mkonto Sizwe was based on actually the Israeli, uh, an Israeli group and uh, you know you had all these uh, Jews who were very very involved in the ANC and I wanted to go what's going on there, why were these left-wing Jews so passionate about black civil rights. Um, I started the PhD and then actually gave it up because I realized I was sitting in a library by myself. You now I'm going to go into comedy. But I could never mm. put down that side of me which was really interested in political development. So even this story of Ellie Cohen, one thing I noticed a few years ago was that no one was really covering what was going on in Syria and this you know, it ended up being the biggest ever slaughter of Arabs in history. And so me and my wife ended up being involved in the Syrian refugee crisis and inoculating a bunch of children in, in Syria. Politically and historically, this is a really interesting period in time in that it's the start of the Ba'ath Party in Syria. So had it not been for this time period where his dad is uh, Hafez al-Assad, he was the head of the Air Force while Ellie Cohen was in Syria at the time. He becomes the defense minister after Ellie Cohen is 
after his demise. So that, you know, the takeover by that group ends up changing history as we know it. That, you know, if you look at, because the Ba'ath Party take over there, it helps Saddam Hussein take over in Iraq. It creates uh, Hafez al-Assad, Bashar al-Assad, which creates the Syrian refugee crisis, which creates, you know, the biggest influx of immigrants into Europe, rise of nationalist movements, and that even has an impact on Brexit. So it's, as an ex-historian, it's a really fascinating route of the current conflict. Thank you so much. Fascinating right, talking right. with you.